today it is uh, starting the confirmation and also the fourth Sunday after Easter in Denver. And the epistle for this fourth Sunday after Easter is taken St. Paul's letter in St. John chapter 1. Dearly beloved, every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. For of his own will he, 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 uh, hath he begotten us by the word of truth, that we might by, be some beginning of his, uh, of his creature. You know, my brethren, you know, my dearest brethren, and that every man be swift to hear, but slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the anger of, of, of man worketh not the justice of God. Wherefore, casting away all cleanness and abundance of, of, of naughtiness, with uh, <clears throat> meekness receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. In the Gospel. Take that according to St. John chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I go to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow hath filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go. For I go, if I go not, the, 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 the para paraclete will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict, convince the world of sin and of justice and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. And of justice, because I go to the Father, and you shall see me no longer. And of judgment, because the prince of this world is already judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will speak, he will teach you all truth. For he that he shall not speak of himself, but what things soever he shall hear, he shall speak. And the things that are are to come, he shall show you. He shall glorify me, because he shall receive of mine, and shall show it to you. Thus far the words of today's holy gospel. Father and Son, we close to men. So on this day of confirmations, and of this fourth Sunday, this time of Easter, it's also the feast of St. Athanasius. And Athanasius was the great bishop of the 4th century for the, uh, who stood up against Arianism. Because even though Arianism was condemned to the Council of Nicaea, the condemnation of the church and the teaching of the truth was not sufficient to make it spread. This is a very common error, very common mistake that we make if only you tell people the truth, they're going to believe it. If only you tell them what's right, they will learn. That is the reason why the great and wise man, John Dewey, developed the modern public school system in the 19th century. And they said, if only we can get education throughout the whole world, everyone will know what the truth is, they will know what good is, and people are basically honest, and people are basically good, and as long as you tell them the truth, they're going to believe it. In the year of our Lord, 325, the Holy Ghost, communicated through our Holy Mother of the Church, the Athanasian Creed was given to us. A deacon wrote it named St. Athanasius. He was not yet even a priest, not yet a bishop, but a young deacon. And the, and the, the, the truth was given clearly that no one could be confused. And the church condemned the heresy of Arius. What happened? For the next 200 years, the church had to fight the problem of Arianism. Because to condemn error is most necessary, but it is not sufficient. Something else must be done. And so we see, there must be warriors, there must be soldiers... There must be defenders of the army and kingdom of God. And this is the import of the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation. Confirmation is a sacrament that makes us soldiers. 
that makes us warriors, that makes us defenders of the truth. If someone is ignorant and they don't know the truth, you don't need a warrior, you need a teacher. And one thing that our Lord Jesus Christ never was, was teacher. He never liked being called teacher. The very last thing that the traitor, the one who now burns in hell and is a symbol of all betrayal, the most wicked man in amongst the apostles, what was the last thing that he said to Jesus Christ? Hail, teacher. Our Lord Jesus Christ does not like to be called a teacher. And what was the response when Judas said to him, Hail, teacher. He said, Judas, <coughs> dost thou betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Teachers are often traitors. It is not sufficient <coughs> to be a teacher. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not come to teach, <coughs> though he does teach. He came to die on the cross for our sins. He came to conquer. He came to capture souls and bring them back upon his back into the kingdom of heaven. He came to build. He is called the carpenter, the carpenter's son. He is called many things. We have many names for him in the Old Testament. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. But he is not called rabbi. He is not called teacher. John knew he was wrong. While it is necessary to teach, the priest of God, the bishop of God, the Holy Father, we are not teachers, doctors. Now when a doctor teaches, why does he teach? The word doctor does mean to teach. Doctrine means to teach. But what is doctrine? Doctrine is something that tells you, I tell you, that if you take this cyanide, you're going to be unhealthy in the morning. If you take these vitamins, it may help you to overcome your sickness. And it's good to know these things. But why do we teach it? So you can take your vitamins. And why do we teach it? So that you can stay away from cyanide. We do not teach in order that you might be educated. We teach in order that the soul might be filled with the knowledge that came through the ears and enter into the heart and make the heart beat and enter into the mind and make the mind think and enter into the passions and make the passions have passions that are motivated by the teaching. Hence, St. Paul wisely tells us, Fides ex auditu. Faith comes by hearing but not hearing from a teacher. We hear <coughs> from, a, from a great master, <coughs> my Lord. We hear from our Lord. <coughs> we hear from the Lord whom we serve. We hear from the Lord whom we obey. The Lord that we are going to follow. There must not only be teaching. Now every heresy that came to us at Vatican II was already condemned. Every error given to us in the heresy of modernism, which St. Pius X says is the grand sewer and the great synthesis of all heresies, and all heresies have already been condemned. All truth has already been taught. The encyclicals have been written. The decrees have been made. The sacred scripture contains the holy truth of God to which nothing needs to be added. <coughs> and yet, lies continue. And yet heresy grows throughout the entirety of the world. And why is this? Because it takes more than knowledge to defeat lies. It takes soldiers. It takes shepherds. The shepherd is not one who is well educated in sheep. The shepherd is one who watches sheep. The shepherd is one who feeds sheep. The shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. And notice that all these things are not teaching. Though teaching is part of what a shepherd must do. Our Lord Jesus Christ didn't like to be called teacher. When the Greeks came to him, they said, Come to Greece. Come on to Greece. 
And if you come to Greece, you won't find the people like the Jews here in Israel. They're going to put you to death. They're very violent. They're very wicked. But if you come to Greece, we never kill our prophets. Bishop Sheen said once upon a time, we never kill our prophets. We did make a mistake with Socrates, and we were sorry about that one. But we don't kill our prophets. We like to hear what they have to say. And Lord Jesus Christ responded to the request of these Greeks. And he said, Unless the seed die, it remaineth itself alone. This is the problem of teaching. He who only teaches is doomed to remain alone. <clears throat> he who only teaches is doomed to see that his truth is not spread. <clears throat> that is why the devil and the communists and the Satanists don't worry too much about the blogs. You've got to get the word out. The word is out. You sit down at McDonald's and you can read about the importance of health food. And you can watch a video documentary about supersize me. And then you order a number three and you supersize it. Somehow watching the documentary doesn't work. Hence we have the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, which the devil wisely attacked at the Vatican II. Because there are seven sacraments. It is true that the Sacrament of Confirmation is a sacrament that is not necessary for salvation. You can go to heaven without being confirmed, just like a child can go to heaven without ever becoming an adult. You don't have to become an adult to go to heaven. You do have to, or to be alive. You're a baby, you're alive. You don't have to be an adult. But if you're 90 years old, you better not be a baby. You should become an adult. As St. Paul says, you should take and put away the things of a child and become an adult. But you don't have to be an adult. You can go to heaven without being confirmed. It's not a necessary sacrament for salvation for the individual, but it is necessary for the church. And it is necessary that there be the continuation of the battle of the church. Confirmation is a sacrament that gives us the power to fight gives us the strength to stand when the winds of lies and the winds of immorality blow. Our Lady of Quito said, In the 20th century there shall be a great attack in the church, and there shall be an attack against the seven sacraments. <clears throat> Each of the sacraments shall be attacked in some way. <clears throat> she predicted this in the year 1600. And 400 years later, according to her prediction, it happened. There was an attack against all the sacraments. Every Catholic parent knows, I must have my child confirmed. I should have my child confirmed. And so they bring their child to the new church to be confirmed. And they don't use olive oil in many cases, in which case it's not a valid sacrament because Christ made the oil as a, valid, as a necessity for the validity of the sacrament. And it's oil made from olives. <laughs> in most cases, they use olive oil, and in many cases they do not. And it's impossible to know what they did. And then you have the problem of changing the sacrament. They changed the sacrament in the same way that the Anglicans changed the sacrament of the priesthood, in which they said, receive the Holy Spirit as the only words of the sacrament. We receive the Holy Ghost in all seven sacraments. <clears throat> He's received in baptism, and all the way to extreme unction, the Holy Ghost is received in all sacraments. Well, they left out, why are you receiving the Holy Ghost? Ad robor, or strength. To confirm, to strengthen. Why are we receiving the sacrament? It must be to strengthen. <clears throat> and it is deliberately left out in the new church that this sacrament is not to strengthen. And they would say, only receive the Holy Ghost. So many souls come to receive the sacrament of confirmation in the new rite. And it's invalid because they have not the right oils and commanded by Christ. The church can add rules and subtract, and it cannot subtract rules. You cannot change what Christ has made. And of course, a soul that is not confirmed can go to heaven. <clears throat> As 
So the confirmed can still be a very good Catholic. But what happens to a soul that's not confirmed? He is wounded. He's not so strong as God wants him to be. A child can still fight, but he cannot fight with the strength of a man. And so that is that, that, the, church, that the devil wanted to weaken our holy mouth of the church. Therefore, he could not make the sacrament of baptism invalid. He could not make all the sacraments invalid. But he made sure that he weakened those sacraments. And with regard to the sacrament of confirmation, it is most likely invalid. Hence, we have the custom of those confirmed in the new rites. They who started in 1968. That's when they brought in the new rite. When it, when it was those confirmed in the new rite, they should be conditionally reconfirmed in the traditional and old rites. Because confirmation is important, we are to be strengthened. There is a ceremony in the Mass of the Bishop. And that is that when the gospel is being sung, <coughs> the bishop, he does not have his mitre on, it is to be removed. Because the mitre is the symbol of the horns of the two testaments. And they are instructed when the mitre is put on the bishop, that may this may these receive the, the two horns of the Old and New Testament, that you might appear fearsome to the enemies of the truth. We do not wear mitre during the gospel. <clears throat> because during the gospel, the bishop is learning the truth. During the gospel, he is contemplating the truth. He is not teaching it. After the gospel, he shall teach it. And hence the mitre shall come on. But with his hands, he holds with both hands the crozier. And the crozier is held right in front of his face, where you don't normally hold it. And he holds with both hands the crozier as he looks at the gospel. And why is this? Because the crozier is the staff of the bishop. The crozier is used to drive away the wolves. And the crozier is used to pull the sheep out of a pit. And the bishop must learn how to use a crozier. Now there is a very great mistake that most bishops make, starting with St. Peter, who was the chief of all bishops. He decided it was much better to use a sword than a crozier. Sharper, so it's good to have two, more is better. But his swords didn't last very long. And when he used his sword, all it did was cut off the ear and the ear is the way we receive the church and the way we receive the faith. The sword was a disaster for Peter. It's not the weapon that he needs to use. And hence our Lord Jesus Christ, who said earlier, Do you have any swords? And they said, Yes, we have two swords. And he said, It is enough. He wanted them to bring the swords. So that he told them, I want you to have swords, and I want you to bring them to the garden. The Fathers of the Church tell us Christ said this in order to make it very clear that he is not against the death penalty. <clears throat> there are people that need a sword in their belly after they have murdered. Furthermore, that he is not against the just war, which must be fought, since there can be two swords. And he told them to bring the two swords to the garden, but he didn't tell them to use them. He didn't tell them it was for them to use, because they are apostles, and apostles don't use swords. Apostles preach crusades, but they don't pull out a sword in any crusade. St. Peter did not understand this. What is the weapon that protects the faith? It is the crozier. And he must hold on to it tight while the bishop, while the gospel is being sung, and learn how to wield the crozier. Now, what is the rule of crozier wielding? It is the rule of the gospel. For the crozier is very gentle. It reaches down into a pit and it pulls a sheep out without choking him to death. It pulls them gently out of the pit. And the crozier drives off the wolf. Sometimes it is used to make a little bit of a tap on the behind of a sheep in order to remind them to get back in line. It is used sometimes with great violence against the wolves. It is used sometimes gently. It is used in order to save the sheep. And the shepherd has confidence in his staff. 
And he doesn't need swords. And he doesn't need machine guns. And he doesn't need all kinds of weapons of the world. He just needs that staff. It is the gospel that teaches us how to fight. Now when a young man or young girl comes forward to receive the holy sacrament of confirmation, kneels down in front of the bishop, they sign you with the sign of the chrism of salvation, and they strengthen you. And what happens? Fox take them, a little slap upon the cheek, to remind the one that he must be, or she must be, <coughs> strong in battle. Must be ready to stand up for the holy faith. But one thing we must always do is stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ never retreated from a fight. The Blessed Virgin Mary did not retreat from the cross. It is not always necessary to attack. It is not always necessary to fight directly. But it is always necessary to be strong. Always necessary to be ready to hold our faith. Usquead martem. And if we are strong in our faith, and if we love our faith, and if we keep our faith, we shall experience persecution. And we must remember also that while we must learn our catechism, and it's most important, that catechism is to enter into our hearts. It's to enter into our passions and our bodies. It's to enter into every part of our being and be what makes us work, what makes us walk, what makes us play, what makes us sleep, what makes us arise from sleep, what makes us do all things we do. So that everything we do is inspired by the Holy Ghost. And the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost enter inside of us in a most sacred and special way. Though we receive the seven gifts in a certain way in all of the seven sacraments. <clears throat> it is most specially given for fighting, for defending our faith, and for spreading it in the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation. And also Confirmation is a social sacrament. <clears throat> it is a reminder <clears throat> that we are not to keep our faith to ourselves, and a reminder that we must be witnesses to the world of the faith that is in us. The modern world, the modern Catholic, doesn't want to be a witness anymore, but we must be witnesses. It's important to be a witness to the world, and a witness to the faith, and hold firm our holy faith, and spread it to the very ends of the earth. This is most necessary. And so in any case, we receive this holy sacrament of confirmation of the Feast of St. Athanasius, who fought boldly to protect our faith. And who do you have to fight against most? Bishops. These are the greatest enemies of the faith, and they always have been, for there were many wicked men on Good Friday. But who was the most wicked? He was a bishop of the church. And what did that bishop of the church do? Right after he was consecrated a bishop, Right after he was at the first holy sacrifice of the Mass and received Holy Communion, what did he do? He led a mob into the garden to capture Jesus Christ, to betray him with a kiss. And before he betrayed him, he called him Rabbi, Teacher. And then he betrayed him. And then he brought the Teacher in order that he might die. And it caused Judas to commit suicide in despair only a few hours later. Well, the teacher showed that he was not just a teacher, that he was a redeemer and a soldier. And Judas did not win in his fight. Judas only failed. The apostles were cowards that day, and they ran away. Peter ran away, and all the other apostles ran away. But though they ran away in their bodies, their hearts did not run away from our Lord Jesus Christ. They experienced the greatest pain in their hearts that day and all the way until Easter Sunday when the Lord reappeared to them. And finally he would say to the greatest and most important of those apostles, those St. John is the Beloved, this is what I want you to do, Peter. Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Feed my lamb. He didn't say, teach him, give him an online course, give him a diploma. He said, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Let us pray for shepherds and for sheep alike, who will not only know their faith, who will not only 
say that we don't accept the lies of the modern world and the heresies that are all around us. But we are ready to die for that faith and carry that faith to every place in which we are. Bring that faith wherever it is not. Bring that and increase that faith wherever it is and be builders of our holy faith. Let the love of the faith cause us to feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. This is what's necessary in our times. That's what St. Athanasius did. He had to go into exile. He had to live in a well. He had to be thrown out of his diocese five different times. He was excommunicated by the Pope three times. And he was the most hated bishop in the church. And yet he fed the lambs, fed the lambs, and fed the sheep. And he ordained the priests, and he spread the word. And this is what the holiest bishop of the 20th century did. We are the sons of that bishop. And I am the son of that bishop, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. He was the Athanasius of our times. And he didn't just say, modernism is bad, and Vatican II is bad, and that bishop is bad, and there's a Mason over there, and there's a Satanist over there. Read about it in my publications. <coughs> He traveled to the ends of the earth, bringing Jesus Christ to souls. He anointed, he preached, he baptized, he confirmed, he ordained. And he brought souls to Christ, and Christ to souls. That's the answer to modernism. And that's the answer to masonry and Satanism. And they tried to shut us off, and they will try to shut us off again. All the way till the end of the world. But they shall never succeed. The faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And his holy apostles. And his holy disciples. And his holy faithful. Shall continue until the very ending of time. Though there may be very few at one time and another. He shall never be stamped out. But there is one thing that shall be stamped out. That is Satan and all his kingdom. It's a fool that follows Satan. The wise man follows Christ. Hence we say, receive the gift of wisdom. Wisdom is to follow God and guide all things to Him. Receive the gift of understanding. And understanding is a gift by which we deeply understand those words of sacred scripture. Those uh, twelve articles of the creed. What we are supposed to do. And receive the gift of knowledge. Knowledge tells us that God is in all things. To see all things in God. Not just all things in the world, but all things that are done. God allows or he makes all things happen in order to prepare his kingdom. See God in all things. And piety, which is a result of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And piety, what does it do? <clears throat> It causes us to respect God and things, to respect holy things, to respect the church, to respect the religion, to stand with respect ourselves, because we see God in things, understand His holy faith, and guide all things to Him. And then fortitude. The fortitude gives us the strength to fight against all of the enemies, and to stand firm and perform these other four gifts, with, with, and no matter what the adversity. And then counsel, which teaches us to avoid the deceits of the devil. The ways in which the devil is trying to deceive us and drag us into his kingdom. And understand, no, that's an attack of the devil. That's back of the devil. Don't fall in this trap. Don't fall in that trap. But continue along the path of wisdom. And then fear of the Lord, which is in all seven gifts. Fear only sin. Fear only to offend God. Fear only hell. And do not fear anything else. And the fear of the Lord makes us pious. Fear of the Lord is a foundation of all of the other gifts. And these seven gifts are the great gifts that God has given to us. And he increases them in a most sacred way in this holy sacrament of confirmation. The strengthening of all seven gifts. The strengthening of baptism. The strengthening of the Holy Eucharist. The strengthening of marriage. It is a strengthening of all things, and we need strength when the devil's after us, and we need strength to climb a mountain. Let's climb the mountain to God, and let us fight against the foolishness of the devil, and be strong 
And remember that we cannot be strong without the mother. It's the best way to be strong. You can run up a mountain, but it's a lot easier if you're right in their arms. It's a whole lot easier. It's very safe, too, because the devil is going to be crushed by her feet. And if you're in your arms, you're a safe distance from the devil. That's the best way to be strong. Like one of the boys, neighbors in, in, in Syracuse, talking to one of our big boys, and he says, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> Little boy, you're going to beat me up? Yep, I'm going to beat you up right now. Really? Let's get started. I'm going to get my big brother. <laughs> well, his big brother was going to beat him up in his name. He wasn't afraid. So we say to the devil, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to destroy you. You want to rumble? Yeah, let me just get my mommy. <laughs> But remember, this is the wisdom of the church. It's the wisdom of those sacraments. She is the spouse of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will never do anything that she does not want. She's the daughter of the Father. And he loves all of us, but most especially her children. And she's the mother of the Son. And the Son only wants what his mommy wants. The best way to receive the Holy Ghost is to ride in the arms of the mother. When we receive the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, we are increased in our bond to the Holy Mother of God, to our Holy Mother Mary, and she becomes more our mother. And that means that we have more strength to fight against the evil one and the wicked one, and more strength to climb a mountain to God. And she is not a teacher. Her son is not a teacher. The father is not a teacher. The father is a creator. The son is a redeemer. The Holy Ghost is a sanctifier. And the fool Judas thinks they're just teachers. We don't follow teachers. We follow the Lord of Lords, the God of gods, the King of kings, the redeemer, the sanctifier. And confirmation can teach us how to do these things. Can you go to heaven without it? Yes, you can. But with this holy sacrament, you can be most strengthened and have a most strong and most wonderful life and be truer and more wonderful disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and our Lord's Holy Mother. Glory to God, Father, and Son, and Holy Ghost.